Hello again and welcome to another edition of Southern Country. Hi, I'm Herb Southern and welcome to the show. We're here in Reddington, New Jersey at the Bowman Stickney Farmstead and Daniela is the uh, museum administrator and she's going to take us around the house here and a couple other locations. Daniela, tell us where we're at. You were at the Bowman Stickney Farmstead, which was built in 1741 by Thomas Bowman. He was a Dutch immigrant who settled in this area. And he built this house out of uh, stone that came from Cushatook Mountain, which is located in back of us. And his family owned the farmstead until the mid-1800s. And the last inhabitant was, was Dorothy Stickney. And she was a Broadway actress who was married to Howard Lindsay, a Broadway producer. They're best known for Life with Father, The Sound of Music. Sure, sure. And this doesn't go back too far then with Dorothy Stickman, does it? She died in 1998 at the age of 101. And at that time, the township purchased it with Green Acres funds, and we have converted the farmstead into a museum. How long has the museum been in business? Well, the museums have been around for about 10 years. Uh, one of the other locations, the Eversall Hall House, was the first uh, site in the museum family. Uh, we now have four sites all together in the family. Uh, we have a one-room schoolhouse and a mill at which flour was ground for Washington's troops. Washington was everywhere. He, he got around. <laughs> yeah. Daniela, we're standing in front of a corn crib. That's right. It's Talk to me. It's a double corn crib. Uh, it has... Uh, cribs on both sides for drying corn, and in the center you could store your wagon. It was one of the many outer buildings that you would find on a farm in colonial times. This is an original corn crib that goes back to ages about the same um, year as the house? Uh, the corn crib is from the 1820s, about, and it wasn't original to this site. It was moved from another location and rebuilt here, as well as the barn. Uh, the barn is from roughly the same time period, and it was moved from what used to be the Wade Farmstead on Reddington Road, and it was going to be demolished, and it was saved by the township historian, Stephanie Stevens, and relocated here and recently rebuilt. Wow. How many acres did this whole farmstead? At the present time, we have 68 acres. And are they being farmed? Uh, not being farmed. Uh, some of the grounds are groomed with walking trails, and we're going to be restoring the gardens here and hopefully revitalizing the fruit trees. There's a lot going on here for all the people in the area. Yeah, we keep busy here. We try to offer a lot of things to the local residents. Good. Well, Danielle, I'm getting hungry. That's why we came to the kitchen. It's a good place to be if you're hungry. Uh, we've re recreated a colonial kitchen, as it may have looked when the Bowmans lived here in 1741. Obviously, when Dorothy Stickney lived here in the 1900s, it would have looked a little differently. But uh, we have this set up so that when people come for our open houses and children come for our school programs, they get an idea of what a colonial kitchen would have looked like. How often do the school programs participate in the... Uh in this um, museum? Right now we have school programs for the children in Reddington Township. And this year, first graders came to this farmstead and learned about colonial life. In their studies, uh, they learned about family life, and this way they can compare and contrast family life from today as opposed to yesterday. How often is the museum open to the public? This random. Um, we try to uh, have all of our, our museums open about every month. And um, we're working on special exhibits and, and programs that are offered throughout the year for the public. And the museum's open year round? Pretty much. Good. Yeah. Well, if you want to cook some warm food, we're standing in front of the right place, Danielle. Tell us about the fireplace in this. House. Well, this is where the colonial housewife would have done her cooking, and she would have had to get up very early in the morning to get a fire started. And throughout the day, as she cooked, she could create different burners, pulling aside embers over which she could cook. She could put things like the spider skillet over an ember and do some sautéing. But you can learn more about that and about the different herbs and fruits that we have drying here if you come to the museum when it's open. Can you show me where the microwave is, please? Well, the microwave would be... <laughs> Behind you. Behind you. That, is that the early version of the microwave? I guess it would be, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Daniela, after working hard in the field and having a hearty meal, they retired to the uh, bed for a good night's sleep before they do it all over again. Tell us what we have here. Uh, this is a rope bed that would have been found in your bedchamber. And the expression sleep tight mm -hmm. came from rope beds. The mattresses were held up by ropes instead of a box spring. That was the early box spring. And if you wanted somebody to sleep comfortably, you wanted the ropes to stay nice and tight so they wouldn't sink to the bottom. Wow. 
Wow. So how often do they have to replace the well as soon as they, as soon as they land on the floor, I guess they put a rope in, new rope in, huh? Well you'd use a bed key to tighten up the rope. Get out a bed key. See, so, yeah, I just learned something new all the time. And tell us about the bedding. Well, if you were fortunate to sleep on this rope bed, you could sleep on this feather mattress. Okay. But it would take a lot of feathers. A it, lot of geese? A lot of geese. <laughs> take some time before you'd have enough feathers to fill a mattress. In the meantime, though, you'd sleep on a tick filled with straw and hay. It was called a tick because it was made out of ticking fabric. And uh, as you can imagine, if it's filled with straw and hay, you're going to find... Ticks. Bugs. bugs. So don't let the bed bugs bite came from, from sleeping on a mattress filled with straw and hay. That's an old time expression, huh? Mm-hmm. That's pretty interesting here with the way they put beds together in the old days. I tell you, you slept good, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after a hard day's work, you sure did. You can, sleep on, you can sleep on the floor after a hard day's work. Yeah, I imagine you could. Well, Danielle, I'm about ready to close the show here at the Bowman Stickney Farmstead in Reddington Township. Where are we so we can close the show? What room in the house? We're in the parlor, and this is where the family would have retired in the evening. And the children might play games on the floor. Um, the father might read from the family Bible to the family. And uh, the parents might have enjoyed a spot of tea before they went to bed. What kind of games? Do you have any idea what kind of games the kids would be playing back in the 1700s, 1800s? A game that still is popular today would be jacks and marbles. Um, a lot of wooden toys that were often made by uh, the children or the, the fathers or grandfathers. All made toys. Yep. Yeah. Nothing plastic back then. No, and the word didn't exist. No, not at all. Oh, uh, would you care to pour me a spot of tea? I'd be happy to. Mm -hmm.